Hello everyone, this is Chi Min Pong. Welcome to our post 2021 Asia Pacific Disaster Management Summit. And we invite the uh, former mayor of uh, Hiroshima, Mr. Akiba, and come to join us with the Taoyuan mayor, the Mr. Wen Zhen Chan, and also the uh, Lai Jianxin. Uh, it's our WRA Water Resources Agency. And however, uh, due to the te technical problem, we cannot hear uh, very clearly about the uh, Akiba-san's voice. So right now, I go back to have a good connect with Akiba-san to talking about that. Uh, hello, Akiba-san. Hello. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to connect this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, what's your uh, comment about that summit? And uh, probably because the first question I asked uh, the Mayor Jen is uh, talking about the uh, uh, right now is the climate emergency. It's totally different compared to the traditional disaster. I remember uh, when you have a keynote at that yes. day, uh, very clearly uh, talking about the uh, Japan, uh, Japan's earthquake and also the heavy rain and some kind of events. But during the climate emergency, it's totally different. And the uh, uh, mayor Jens uh, claim and uh, he, we shall prepare something for that. And however, uh, what's the Japan's uh, uh, thinking about the climate emergency? What will you do? You know, it's a global and uh, very long-range problem. And uh, even if we start right now to address the problem, it will take years, you know, before the real effect actually uh, takes place. But some of uh, the bright spots uh, in, the, in the whole picture is that uh, local governments, you know, cities and towns are already started to tackle this problem years ago. You know, for example, while I was mayor, that's 10 years before I became mayor of Hiroshima in 1999. And soon I realized that cities do have an important role in addressing the question. So we formulated the city's plan to reduce uh, carbon emission by 50% by 2030. Because that was the goal in around 1995. And unfortunately, the you know it has not been pursued in all the cities in Japan and uh, you know all the cities in in the United States either. But some of the more aware cities. You know, did take up the project and uh, and start uh, formulating uh, questions. And in addition, sort of uh, we you know, addressed uh, problems on a day-to-day -day, you know basis to re reduce uh, carbon emission. You know, from that that point on, and the Japanese government has finally come to set the goal, the same goal as the city of Hiroshima had set right now. So it's a 50 percent reduction by. 2030 and uh, by 2050 carbon free society so anyway i i'm glad that the world is uh, coming coming around and in addressing the problem but i know that uh, in taiwan you know you have tackled these problems you know just logically scientifically and based on facts and i i envy you know, how you have been doing this and i hope you will export you know your know-how, your commitment, and uh, you know various uh, specific measures that you've taken to the rest of the world, especially within Asia, so that uh, you know we can catch up. You know, for example, yeah, I, actually I could go on, but one thing I'd like to say is that um, you know all these questions actually can all these questions appear in how we deal with COVID-19, uh, including climate emergency. COVID-19 is a completely different problem, but how we deal, how the government deals with uh, such an emergency is reflected on how we have managed uh, with um, managed the COVID-19 pandemic so far. So um, I think you're offering a very good example uh, for all of us. Okay, just I know in Japan, your uh, prime minister also announced uh, carbon uh, neutral will be in Japan will be 2050. Yes, uh, you you are very uh, active about the uh, carbon zero, and uh, how is it's not easy to do that. Uh, just I know because in Taiwan, our president uh, Tsai also announced the global trend is also the Taiwan goal, and uh, so probably Taiwan will announce uh, we will be uh, carbon neutral in. 
2050. And uh, uh, what's the major things uh, for the city? Did they have also plan to do the carbon neutral? Because the, right now in Taiwan, most of the key problem will be the energy, especially the, the electric power. Uh, most of the electric power in Taiwan are from the carbon and also uh, from gas. And also it's also emit lots of the uh, carbon dioxide. So it's not easy to go to zero. <laughs> so I'm wondering, uh, what's this kind, such is kind of the carbon zero and uh, activity happen in some cities right now or just talking? And because the action is more important than talking. You know, when you look at the problem from a technological and scientific point of view, the most important thing we have to accomplish is to increase the efficiency of um, you know, use of energy. In doing anything, we are, in most cases, I think we are throwing out 80% of the energy. That's a complete waste. So we will have to address that problem by, you know, making, you know, cars, other means of transportation, sort of ways of manufacturing things, and, our, you know, even our daily lives to be more energy efficient. And also um, recycling and and uh, recycling is also important and as well as solar energy and other uh, reusable sources of uh, energy into a picture and that's advancing quite rapidly uh, in Japan so uh, that that's a very good sign and uh, you know people becoming more conscious of the the use of energy are trying very hard to you know change the lifestyle uh, completely and in order to activate that um, you know recently throughout Japan providing free you know shopping bags plastic shopping bags you know has been changed so that we have to pay well we have to bring our own shopping bags but that happens well several times a day and that makes people aware that uh, you know we have to address uh, this problem so that comes back to the use of, you know, for example, hot water within each house, uh, mm -hmm. and also, and uh, in in factories and other places as well. Uh, also, at the city level, we have um, created the energy sort of uh, you know trading system by which that one sector that saves energy, you know, could sell the right to a certain percentage use of energy to other you know, places where the use of energy cannot be reduced so rapidly. So, um, you know, that kind of, you know, trading is creating a market for energy use and so forth. So, I mean, all those things are done globally, but they can be done more realistically at the city level and town, town level. And I believe that uh, that's also, you know, something we cities no, should tackle. Okay, thank you. And uh, I remember that day, uh, the Mayor Jen and also the Dr. Lai, uh, and they are talking about the drought situation. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, in Taiwan, we have more experience about the flood, heavy mm -hmm. rain, and the drought. It's not easy to find a drought event, especially this year is a special year. Last year, no typhoon come to Taiwan, and mm -hmm. later on, and this year, be because of the La Nina, La Nina and uh, in Taiwan's uh, springtime and mm -hmm. during the spring season, we do not have enough uh, precipitation. So right now, uh, we also meet a very uh, severe drought situation, especially the May front. You know, you know, you know from May, uh, Taiwan is, is the start of the May stationary from. It will start from Taiwan, uh, later on go to the uh, Japan uh, and uh, about in July. And however, right now it jumped to the China directly, north of Taiwan. Uh, so right now we do not have enough enough rent. All we want is uh, waiting for a typhoon to come to Taiwan. It's not easy to uh, meet a good typhoon and uh, bring a uh, uh, lot of water to Taiwan. And uh, so the drought situation uh, is very severe and also everybody notice about that. And however, we do not have enough experience about that. And uh, I remember the Mayor Jen helped the, our water resource agency. And uh, in Taoyuan, they, they met some uh, plan in advance. So right now the Taoyuan, although the, uh, the dam of the Taoyuan and it's not good enough, 
However, mm -hmm. they, they get the water from Taipei and from north, and later on they bring their water to south. <laughs> so Taoyuan is a very good example to help the uh, central government and local government working together, also help the other cities. So it's a very good example in Taiwan. However, it's not easy to find uh, such a kind of situation because uh, uh, we do not have a, enough experience about the drought situation. So I'm wondering, uh, uh, if you are the mayor before, had you met the, the drought situation uh, before, or is, is that easy? Because I, I just I know in Japan, uh, sometimes Japan will make a new dam right now, and uh, you will prepare to save the water as you can, right? Well, yes. Uh, drought ha had been a big problem, and but recently, well, let's look at about twenty or thirty years span of time that uh, drought became a serious problem for Japan and the Tokyo area and actually in Shikoku and uh, the western area. I guess that's about 15 or 20 years ago. That was a serious problem. But after that, I guess that the typhoons, the pattern of typhoons sort of coming around toward you know uh, the Philippines, ta uh, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, uh, that that pattern has shifted radically, and also the severity of each uh, typhoon has become greater. The number of typhoons occurring each each year really has not changed, but that each typhoon uh, relatively has become stronger than before. So what we actually had been hit was that the massive amount of torrential rain during the rainy season that's in June and that's coming very soon, June and July, and also typhoons, massive typhoons hitting Japan causing, you know, floods and, uh, you know, debris, uh, disasters and, and so forth. So we haven't really seen a uh, serious drought except last year, I guess in one prefecture, the dam uh, that was uh, prepared for drought season had to be evacuated because the dam had to be reconstructed. And because of that, there was not enough water. And as you mentioned, that uh, enough number of typhoons didn't really hit that area in time. So uh, drought became a problem. So then the neighboring cities, towns, and prefectures, they all sent uh, you know, emergency water trucks uh provided by different uh, fire departments and so forth and mm -hmm. that's that's one experience we had recently and that that was caused by the the reconstruction of them and also that coincidentally coincided with the the lack of uh, you know rainfall in the period and mm -hmm. another uh, possible thing that that reminded me was uh, desalination that the Japanese technology for desalinating seawater uh, is really great and we actually have been sending desalination uh, machines and mechanisms to the Middle East Eastern countries that could be an emergency and also it's it's costly but uh, technological solutions also do exist. I remember uh, I asked uh, the mayor Chen about uh, the leadership of the uh, mayor when the disaster happened. In Taiwan, uh, our experience is uh, the mayor in charge everything. <laughs> for example, even the, in Taiwan, we have a typhoon vacation. Yes. For example, a typhoon come to Taiwan and, uh, and it will hit that city. And uh, sometimes the decision of the, just today we do not need to walk or go to school and uh, the, the mayor will make the decision. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the uncertainty of a typhoon uh, is very high <laughs> sometimes. And so sometimes the, the mayor uh, is, uh, is too loose and also too tight. Uh, people will complain about that. And uh, so, so the, the role of the mayor uh, is, uh, they have lots of pressure on, on everything of the mayor. So I'm wondering, what's the leadership in Japan? As you, you, are, you are mayor before. And uh, what's your leadership about uh, when a disaster come to you? And what do you do? And because you are the leader or uh, from top down or bottom up, what's the leadership you did before? Actually, I mentioned uh, during my speech, the lack of coordination 
and the delegation of power uh, at the three levels of government in Japan is a problem. That's the national government and prefectural government and the city and town government. You know, just uh, what you describe, you know, as the Taiwanese system is very good because it's very clear that the local governments do have the authority to decide what to do. But you know, in in the Japanese situation, for example, uh, in the um, the Hiroshima experience of the torrential rain in 1999, the disaster was so monstrous that the city fire department could not completely handle the situation. So we had to rely on the self-defense forces to come in to help. But the city does not have the authority to ask the national self-defense forces directly. So we have to go to the prefecture to ask the self-defense forces to come to help the city. So there's always sort of an, an indirect route you know, to the important uh, connection. And that, that's one problem. And the national government finally you know, had to sort of shoulder the cost of uh, cleaning up the city and reconstructing the damaged area and so forth. But again, the, it's the national government that decides how much money to come to the city, but it comes through the prefecture again and to the city. So the money fl flow is not optimal. So in the case of the Hiroshima case, we the government uh, has finally decided to create a disaster victim relief law, uh, uh, no, uh, sediment uh, disaster uh, relief law, prevention law. But that law was very good because it, uh, you know, just uh, nudged people to relocate to safer places rather than living in places where their houses would be damaged. But the money did not come with it. So the people who were stranded in living in, in a bad place, you know, could not relocate. And especially if they're old. And actually I heard directly from those old people that, uh, well, we don't have money, we are old. And if the next, uh, you know, rain or typhoon hits and if the cliff behind us uh, falls, then it's better that we die, you know, rather than to have to dig out money to build a new house to relocate to. So anyway, a uh, sort of chain of uh, command, you know, just uh, delegating authority and deciding you know, what is appropriate at what point, and uh, especially with uh, money and staff, that's a huge problem in Japan. And so at, even at the time of the East Japan earthquake, you know, for example, uh, the, the national government did not release the, the prediction of which direction radioactivity was going to flow. So some of the towns and cities at the mayor level, they had to decide which direction to escape. So they ended up going into a highly radioactive area because they didn't know which direction is safer. And uh, so that kind of problem is one that Japan really has to solve. But that also depends, you know, just is related to the size of the country and also the shape of the country. Japan archipelago is very long and Japan is has a population, I guess, about five or six times just uh, bigger than Taiwan. And uh, Tokyo's population is just about the same as Taiwan. It is uh, if Tokyo alone has to take care of itself with the money and staff and everything else. I think probably this three layer governmental problem would not uh, probably exist. So in a sense, you, you're utilizing the size and the decision making sort of process very, very well and you know, wisely and I guess efficiently.